Okay. Um, today we're going to talk about covalent bonding. Um, a lot of this you will have done <coughs> at GCSE already, um, but just we're going to go into it a little bit more detail. So if you if you find it <coughs> you know, that you know already, you might want to fast forward a little bit. Um, but here we go. Okay, so covalent bonding is when you sh when you share a pair of electrons. So the let's think about the the most simple covalent bond is the one between hydrogens and the H2 molecule. Um, hydrogen has got one electron. Um, for a full out shell, obviously it's going to need uh, two. Um, and so what happens is if we draw the atoms overlapping and they're sharing that pair of electrons, a dot from one and across from the other. Both of those hydrogens now think they've got an outer shell, um, pull out a shell of two, and that is the H2 molecule. Let's have a little think um, what <coughs> kind of atoms form covalent bonds. So here is our periodic table. Um, there's the reactive metals is the transition metals and this bit here called the p block we'll see later and you're probably all familiar you've got a staircase line which goes down there like that and everything here is a non-metal so first of all we're only talking about quite a small proportion of the <coughs> of the elements in the periodic table form covalent bonds um, although we see transition metals can form covalent bonds later on in the A-level course. but So we're talking about this small group here, but it so happens that these are probably the most important elements um, in terms of chemistry, everything, all living things are made up of all of these non-metals. Um, so they are, although it's only a small proportion, they're very important. Um, okay, so let's have a look at... <coughs> Um, how to draw dot cross diagrams. Now, dot cross diagrams are extremely uh, useful and it will help you all the way through the A-level course <coughs> right until you finish in year 13. If you can draw a dot cross diagram, diagram for any molecule you may come across, it helps in lots of different ways. So it's really important to, to get this skill um, uh, well established. Okay, so, um, all right, let's, um, let's think about um, the rules for drawing a dot cross diagram. And I'm gonna draw it for methane, okay? So first of all, let's, methane, which is CH4. And carbon is in group four of the periodic table. So that means it's got four electrons in its outer shell. Hydrogen, of course, is special, really. It's just got one electron, it's got and <coughs> it's only got one shell. Right, now for the first the first thing when we do a dot cross diagram, we don't show the inner um, the inner shells of electrons because they're not doing anything. So for carbon, if you had to draw the electronic structure of it, you'd draw that. But when we're drawing dot cross diagrams, we don't bother with the inner rings because they just confuse the issue. So get rid of those. Okay. Now, <coughs> um, what you need to do, first of all, is the following steps. You need to, first of all, you need to uh, draw the atoms uh, with, the, uh, with overlaps. What I mean by that is, okay, so I'm going to draw carbon here, and there are four hydrogens, one, two, okay, so that's what I mean by the overlaps. Then two, the second thing you need is you need to put, you need to put a dot and a cross in each overlap 
and that's because uh, <coughs> in each of these covalent bonds there are a pair of electrons being sh shared a dot from one and across from the other so um, so we've got a dot and a cross, dot and a cross, dot and a cross. Okay. Right, the next thing to think about is, uh, <coughs> is then, um, you need to think about the, the central atom. Well, let's just say, um, uh, oh, have we drawn all of the electrons? Right, let's look for carbon. We've got four crosses, one, two, three, four. Carbon's in group four, so yes, we have done that in this case. And so the, and the final step is then to put, which we don't need to do here, well, is we need to um, place the other electrons outside of the bonds. Well, there aren't any other electrons to think about. We've done all carbons, all four of carbon's electrons. We've done each hydrogen's got one electron, so there's no other to worry about there. And then the final step is number five is check each atom has a full outer shell. Or thinks it's got full outer shell. Well, <clears throat> we can see carbon thinks it's got eight electrons there, so that's a full outer shell. And the hydrogen, each one thinks it's got two electrons, so yeah, it has. So we can we're fairly sure that that is the correct structure for methane. So there's four covalent bonds, and there's no electrons outside. Right, let's go across the periodic table here. I'm going to think, you think I've got carbon on the, the first period, the second period. I've got carbon. Um, and then I've got nitrogen, then oxygen, then fluorine, and then neon. Okay, so that's group four, five, six, seven, and group zero. Okay, so we've just done methane, that's CH4. Uh, let's now do ammonia, which is NH3. So I'll get rid of that. So, Is ammonia. NH3. Okay, so nitrogen is in group five, so that means it's got five electrons in its outer shell. Hydrogen, of course, has just got one electron. Let's draw this then. Okay, so we've got our number one. Draw the atom with the overlap. So there's our nitrogen. And we need to draw three hydrogen atoms there, one and three. Uh, the next step is this one, number two here. Uh, draw a dot and a cross in each overlap. So let's do that. Dot and a cross from the hydrogen. Okay, so we've done that. Now we're on to step three. Have we drawn all the of the electrons for the nitrogen? Well, we haven't because nitrogen's in group five and we've only drawn one, two, three crosses from nitrogen. So that means we need to draw two more crosses. So I'm gonna put those there. Okay, so now we move on to step, well, we've done steps, we've done step three. I've just done step four. I've placed the electrons um, outside of the bonds. So finally, step five, check each atom as a full outer shell. So nitrogen has got one, it's got two, four, six, eight electrons in its outer shell. So yeah, that would be happy with that arrangement. The hydrogen's got two electrons and each hydrogen's got two electrons. So they'd be happy. So that is the correct structure for ammonia. Okay, let's now move on to oxygen, okay? We've done carbon, we've done nitrogen, let's do oxygen. Okay, how does oxygen react with water? With, with, with hydrogen, of course, it forms water. Let's do that. Okay. 
Okay, so group, uh, we've got H2O. Oxygen is in group six. Got six electrons in its out shell. Okay, so the first step then is to draw the atoms with the overlaps. So we've got our oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. Next step, draw a dot and a cross in each overlap. <coughs> so we've got a dot and a cross, dot and a cross. It's oxygen, hydrogen. Um, next step, number three. Have we drawn all of the electrons? Uh, well, we have only drawn two, uh, two electrons from oxygen. There's two crosses there. It's in group six. So we need to draw four more. So I'm going to draw, and I'm drawing them in pairs. And you see, a bit later, we'll discuss why I draw them in pairs. It's not just makes it easier to count. There's a reason for it. OK, there you go. Drawn we've done number three and number four. Finally, let's check, has each atom got a full outer shell? OK. Right, the oxygen thinks it's got two, four, six, eight. That's a full out shell. Each hydrogen is fine. So we're confident that, yes, that is the correct dot cross diagram to show the bonding in, in water. OK. So now we have done, we're moving across. We've gone from oxygen number six. Let's go to fluorine now, number seven. So how does that react with hydrogen? So if I draw, um, it's going to form HF. So we'll get rid of this. Uh, HF. Right, so fluorine is in group seven. Seven electrons in its outer shell. So number one. Draw the atoms with the overlaps. Uh, so fluorine and hydrogen. Number two. Dot and across in each overlap. Okay, so we've got dot and across there. That's all we've got. Number three. Have we drawn all of the electrons? We haven't, we've only drawn one for fluorine and it's got seven, so we need to draw six more. So that's three pairs. So. Okay, number four, we've done. Uh, number five, just the final check. Uh, has each atom full, I think it's got a full out shell. Fluorine has got two, four, six, eight. Yes, it does. Hydrogen has got two, so that's all fine. So that is the, again, we're confident that's the correct diagram for hydrogen fluoride. We could move on to neon if you wanted to now. And of course, neon has got, uh, well, it doesn't form any compounds. We'll just show how there's neon. Draw the overlaps, number one, or well, there aren't any overlaps because there's no bonds. Uh, there's no dots or crosses drawn each overlap. Have we drawn all the electrons? We haven't drawn them. And the end's got eight in its outer shell. So I draw eight electrons. One, two, three, four. Okay. So, um, and we can check the each atom has a full out shell. Yeah, Nia has, Neon has a full out shell. So in, well, it doesn't form any covalent bonds. Anyway, so that is the, um, um, how to draw um, dot, dot cross diagrams using these this set of instructions here. Okay, so in the next video, I'll do some more examples of that. Okay.